Morning YouTube and welcome to Musher's Tales. Going to do something a little different today. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the bear skins from the bears I caught last spring. So we'll have a look at that. They're, uh, they're due to be shipped to auction. Uh, the COVID just doesn't affect families, it affects businesses and trapping is not excluded. So uh, with all that's going on, fur pickups aren't what they, they were. So uh, I still have them, they're not shipped yet. Normally they would have been shipped, uh, well, around December. But uh, anyways, I'll show you what they are. Show you the difference between a good skin and a bad skin. I'm uh, definitely not a master fur handler and most assuredly not a, a good fur grader. Hopefully uh, some viewers who know what they're talking about will, uh, will chirp in. Uh, I know we have one person that comes in once in a while that knows a lot more than I know and he might uh, give his input. So uh, we'll have a look at that and uh, you'll see the difference. So here we have a smaller bear, uh, I'd say about roughly five feet, five feet in all. Now, uh, not a very big bear, but not a cub. Uh, when I trap is in the spring, season starts May 15th, ends at the end of June. Uh, a cub at that age, cubs are born in the month of uh, March, cub at that age is uh, you know, in, in that time span, would be about the size of a house cat. Obviously, this is not a house cat. Bears take a long time to grow. And uh, in the springtime, your typical bear in my area is uh, somewhere between 100 to 150 pounds. That could be a 10-year-old bear, like it could be a 5-year-old bear. Uh, females seem to kind of stall around that size. Uh, in the fall, it's a much bigger animal. But in the springtime, after not eating for so long, uh, they're down to their basic frame. This bear is most likely two and a half or three and a half years old. Good fur on the bear. What I think is good fur. Uh, we call it skinned cased. Okay, I didn't open it up like a rug. I skin it out the same way you'd skin out a raccoon or a fox or a wolf. Notice the belly, male bear, uh, flanks, never much fur on the flanks of a bear. I mean, check out a dog, okay, you'll understand why. It's just what it is. Complete claws. Keep the toe pads in. Uh, I used to skin all my bears open. And uh, the smaller ones, I started doing this and my prices really changed. So uh, it's good. It's good. And uh, this, is, this is the kind of bear that people like to eat. This is the kind of bear that uh, is likely to get in trouble. Not easy being a wild animal. And often enough, uh, they're the ones that are chewing up your skidoo seat that you left in the yard or flipping over your garbage or writing your bird feeder. Uh, this one here actually uh, was following our Martin line and uh, between runs, he'd break a dozen boxes and smash them up. So yeah, he was causing us a few problems too. So in the fall, I left a bit of bait there at a smashed up box where she'd smashed a few times and I, uh, left a good chunk of bait there and he came I figured he'd come back in the spring and have a look and early in the spring I put more bait and he started hanging around and he made it to the fur shed. The thing about bears is they can live pretty well under our noses and we don't know uh, they're there. Bears are very stealthy very very quiet creatures. Uh, you usually see a bear before you hear a bear. They don't make a lot of noise when they're in the woods and uh, they can be right by you. I remember uh, one bear I caught, it was a female, and a uh, tooth was sent in to the ministry for examination. It turned out to be an 11-year-old female. 
Uh, she weighed about 125 pounds. And uh, I was sure my trap was empty when I approached it. And then as I got close, she stood up. When I say close, I was maybe four feet away. She stood up and she was lying beside a log. And uh, bears don't, they don't travel for nothing. Okay, whenever, same, same is true for all animals. I mean, they, they're moving, it's for a reason. Okay, it's for love, it's for food, it's for safety. Uh, they just don't move around for any reason. So if you have a good bait set up, that bear is never far from the bait. If he has water, he has food, he has peace and quiet, he's gonna stay there and build up his reserves. He'll never be like a kilometer away generally, unless he's looking for something else, like love. But uh, they'll hang around. So uh, anyways, when, after I caught that bear, uh, which was basically, uh, I don't know, a quarter mile from a camp which two older women were renting for, that had been renting for years actually. Uh, I wondered how often did I go by that bear checking my baits or doing other activities and uh, it was just lying beside a log and I walked right beside it without seeing it. I'm sure it happened many a time, many, many a time. So here we have a much larger animal. I caught a male and female together that were traveling together and uh, this is it, this is one of them. Uh, notice this one skinned out open, you have the lip there, you have the nose. Again this, this is pretty good fur. I'm kind of curious what the auction will bring for this one but I find this guy is pretty good. Not too, uh, not too thin in the flanks. Often when they make carpets and everything, they dye that too. Furs. I mean, a little bit more, I'm losing my finger. Okay, so the fur is pretty good on this one. You have a close-up of the a front foot. Okay, so all the uh, all the fat and everything is removed. Bear's a lot of work. There's no doubt a bear's a lot of work. Leave the ears inside out so they can see what it looks like. No holes in this one, so a bullet hole right there. Uh, bears are alive when you catch them. They were caught in foot snares. And uh, you have to put them down. 22 Magnum uh, lights out very quick. So this bear too, I'm bringing, I'm bringing the bear skins in the house to make sure they have no humidity in them at all, make them super dry before I package them up and put them on a bus to ship. So this is bear number three. That was the, uh, the other of the couple that were traveling together. Often bears in the springtime, that's, that's when the rut's on. Month of June is the rut for bear. Uh, they breed in June and the young are born in March. And uh, if the female has cubs with her, previous cubs, which would be about two and a half years old, uh, most bears, uh, they, breed, they, they don't breed till, uh, every, they breed every second year. They don't breed every year necessarily, unless something goes on. And obviously the cubs have to get out of the way. If not, uh, the male bear is going to kill them and eat them. They'll chase them away. The female will chase them away too, because uh, she's looking for love and not looking for family. So, uh, it's not unusual to have bears traveling together. Often it could be uh, cubs that grew up together and they're at that two and a half year old stage and they haven't split up yet. Or a mother with cubs from not Mar that March, from the March before, that happens once in a while. Or a male following a female, waiting for her to be uh, ready to breed. So again, a decent sized bear. For around here, that's a big bear. We have a lot uh, bigger than average. You know, they're good. 
Once again, furs uh, knuckle deep. And pretty thick everywhere. Skin complete. I mean, there's nothing missing. Mittens are there. Once again, you leave the ears so that uh, they can see. If you're wondering what that ribbon is on all the bears, the bears have to be tagged. And the tag has to stay on until the, the pelt is tanned. So that's what it is. Big feet in this guy. And that's bear number three. The next bear isn't a bear from last spring, it's a bear from the spring before. I hadn't gotten around to doing him because uh, very poor skin. I was tempted to throw it out, tempted to almost not skin the bear, but I did because I don't like stuff like that. I don't like throwing things out. I don't like, uh, not, it's not wasted necessarily because everything goes back to nature, but I don't like killing something and not making any use of it. So uh, yeah, with that, it was, uh, well, I caught it late. Uh, I caught it late for a few reasons. Generally, I like stopping by the, the, the let's say the 15th of June, roughly, because the fur starts going downhill in a hurry around then. Uh, assuming that the bears cooperated before, it's easy to say your bear trapping is an, another thing to catch the bears. But uh, this bear was uh, around uh, some camps, quite a few camps actually, and uh, there's children around, there's grandchildren around, and he was causing a few problems. And uh, basically, yeah, it was he didn't want to go away, so it was time for him to go. Now, a lot of people say, well, you're, you're in the bear's woods, you know, and it's his home and everything. And I understand all that, but uh, these are the same people who say that are the same people that won't have a spider in their house, you know. They see a spider and they got to kill it when the spider's only eating other insects that are in your house. So, I mean, if you're not going to tolerate a spider in your house, don't tell people who live, who go in the bush to tolerate a bear in their backyard or destroying their bird feeders. My wife and I enjoy uh, camping, canoe camping. Uh, we hit the bush, we hit the rivers. Uh, sometimes we go to parks. A couple of years ago, we went to a, a federal park and uh, we check out the campsite and my wife's looking for the, where the bathroom is. We're just seeing the lay of the land. And uh, she approaches and all of a sudden there was a bear with uh, two nice earrings, two red ear tags, walking up the trail towards her. So she hid out in the bathroom, found out that bear is a, a female known to uh, hang around the campsites and everything. And uh, they say she's deaf because uh, she doesn't get afraid of the bear bangers, uh, which the, the wardens fire at her to scare her off. But uh, again, I don't think necessarily the bear is deaf, you know. She just does not uh, associate the noise with danger. Uh, will that bear ever be a problem? I don't know. We camped there anyways, we slept there anyways. Uh, campers near us had kids, told them about the bear. Nobody seemed to really care. And uh, it wasn't it wasn't a problem when we were there. And uh, I know somebody works at the park and the bear seems to be, uh, seems to be fine. A few years back, the government and its wisdom uh, canceled or one of the hunting seasons for bears. There was a spring season, a fall season, and they canceled, I believe it was the fall season. And all of a sudden, you had uh, more bear attacks. Reason being, in the fall, when you had your bear license, if you saw a bear, you took a shot at it. Doesn't take long, people shooting at you, that you say, whoop, people equal danger, keep away. On the other hand, if you have people don't mean any kind of danger, all of a sudden, you get bears that are wondering if you're good to eat, because bears eat a lot, so they check you out. I mean, don't think that you're, you are impressive in the woods. You're not. I mean, uh, a moose calf is a big animal, okay? And a bear will not hesitate to attack a moose calf. And a lot of people are smaller than moose calves. The thing with a bear too is, there's not much you can do about it. You can't climb a tree, you can't run. Uh, they're fast, they're fast and they're strong. 
So uh, it's good that they'd be afraid of us so that we don't have to be as afraid of them. Then again, when I go in the woods, like I'm not the kind of guy that always brings a gun in the woods because uh, I'm not afraid of bears. You know, I respect them, I pay attention to them, but I mean, uh, I'm not afraid of a, a bear at all. You know, I'm sleeping in a tent or something. I'm not afraid of a bear sneaking up or anything. I'm, you know, the odds are statistically quite remote, but I pay attention. So this is a poor quality bear skin. If you look uh, at the flanks, go shedding. So poor is not, you know, poor is maybe a little generous. I mean, I'm not going to lose a finger. You know, look, I mean, <laughs> you still see my fingernail there. I'll dig it in a bit there, but. Oh. <coughs> I mean, uh, it's worth something for the claws, okay? And if uh, you were in the the craft business, I mean, there's stuff you can do with it, I mean, no doubt. But if we're talking an auction house, they're a little fussy. Look at the, the flanks are pretty bare. So uh, I don't expect much for this. Don't expect what I want, but uh, it is what it is. It's not as if I could let them go. Which, to be honest with you, I think if I caught a bear and let it go, the uh, the people with the uh, the camps around and everything, I think they'd uh, be extremely upset with me. They already don't like that I don't uh, kill all the wolves or all the bears. They're always saying, kill them all, kill them all. And uh, no, it's not how I, I do things. Not much money in bear trapping. It's more for uh, predator control. Okay, it's basically for moose calves and deer calves so they don't get eaten. And for beaver, uh, bear, uh, bear will eat beaver. Uh, bear will get in a lot of trouble. And uh, they're beautiful animals, but uh, you got to pay attention when you're around them. Uh, like you know, I, you know, I've never had any problems with bears, and I've, I see them often enough. Uh, one time I was goose hunting and the sun came up and I had seven bears around me. So uh, yeah, that was something when you're hiding in the middle of a field and you have seven bears walking around you, including a mother with two cubs. You kind of pay attention, you tell the dogs to stay calm. Uh, I have a, I know someone who was attacked by a bear. Uh, he was, uh, he's lucky to be alive actually and he's, he's a big boy, you know, maybe 240 pounds and uh, not a sissy by any means. He, not afraid of a fight, put it that way. And uh, he said he was hitting on that bear uh, with an ax, which he managed to get off his off his ATV. And uh, he said it was bouncing off like a, with a drum. And the only reason why he wasn't dragged off in the bush is that he had one hand holding onto the rack of his bike, his ATV, and the other hand with the ax. And he kept hitting the bear, which he said was not a very big bear. And uh, yeah, he still, uh, still has a bad limp. He spent many days in the hospital. Nearly bled to death, question of about a quarter inch. And uh, his whole attitude towards bears changed in a hurry after that incident. Like stuff happens. And uh, I also know other people who've been challenged by bears and charged by bears. We're talking with black bears. Generally speaking, they see you, they take off. But once in a while, you get the one that can be a problem. So uh, in that instance, you, you want them to be afraid of people. So that's it for this video. Hope you find it interesting. Uh, if you know more about this stuff than I do, leave a comment, tell me what you think. I'd be curious. And uh, thanks for watching.